when you think of leadership. Yes. Okay, leading someone. All right, very good. Well, very good. Anybody else? Okay. All right, well, we'll go with that. When you think about leadership, today we're talking about leadership one-on-one, okay? Leadership is simply the ability to interact and relate to others, okay? To, huh? Uh, you can if you like, sure. Yeah, you can write that down on your, on your paper there. The ability to interact and relate to others while offering insight. And it's pretty much what you just said, what you just said. Le- leadership is the ability to communicate with people, to communicate with people, to interact with people, and to offer them, uh, offer them insight or offer them solutions to their uh, problems, okay? Now, when you start talking about leadership, okay, also understand this, leadership starts from within the individual. It starts with you. Now, this is where that diagram comes in handy uh, on that first sheet there. Now, on that first sheet that you have in front of you, Uh, And this is basically a review from yesterday. Go ahead and write your name down there in the middle of that circle. Because leadership starts with you as the individual, so you got to write your name on there. All right? Starts from within. Because before you can lead someone else, you got to be able to, first of all, lead yourself. You got to be able to lead yourself. All right? So your name should be in the middle. All right? Now, The first thing you need to understand about being able to lead yourself, and again, this is review from yesterday. The first thing you need to comprehend about leading yourself is you got to make good use of your time. Why is time management important? Why is time management important? Is time, let me ask you this, is time management important when when you talk about leading yourself? Okay, why? Talk to me, why? Okay, all right, someone help him out. Why is time important when it comes to leading yourself? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, you're absolutely right. You have to figure out the correct time. When is it time to do something? Because life is full of, of, of things that you can do, but you got to make sure that you're making good use of your time, making good use of your time management, all right? Then we move on around. The next thing is, okay, you know that you have time on your hands. You got to make what? What type of choices? Good choices. Good choices. There are two types of choices in life. What are those two types of choices? Good and bad, bad, absolutely. And so if you're talking about leading yourself, you want to make what type of decisions? Good decisions, absolutely. Now, is that uh, that easy? No, it's not. It can be a challenge sometimes, can it? Now, And during those times, that's when you need to fall back on what we talked about on yesterday, your relationship with God to help you in managing your time and making the right choices so that you can lead yourself in the right direction. All right. That's where spirituality came in on yesterday. All right. That's why that component is important. All right. So next on your clock, we're going to have what? Five o'clock. Five o'clock, which represents what? Effort. You got to put forth effort if you're going to lead yourself. Hmm? If you're going to be successful in life, you got to put forth your best effort. In school, guess what? You got to study. If you want to, if you want to talk about leading yourself, you got to study. You got to put forth your best effort. All right. When you're in school, look at joining some type of club. Not only joining a club, but if they have like president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, scribe, some clubs may call it, look at becoming a part of a, a club and assuming a leadership role, a leadership position. That'll be, that, that's part of that effort piece, all right? That's part of that developing who you are as a leader because when you get ready to apply to college, colleges are going to look for, did you do any type of leadership? Uh, did you have any type of leadership responsibilities while you were in high school? Or even in middle school, you know, look for opportunities within middle school to uh, become a leader and to look at being able to to, uh, have an impact within your community. All right, then at seven o'clock represents what? Emotions, emotions, all right? Now, when you're leading yourself, that can be sometimes stressful. 
Absolutely, it can be stressful. Because, again, someone name an emotion that you've had. Yes. Depression. Okay, depression. All right, what's another emotion? Yeah. Anger. Anger. Okay, what's another emotion you've experienced? Yeah. Ha there you go. Absolutely, happiness. Yeah. And, and those are real. Those are real emotions. Those are real feelings that come with life. And it's how you manage those emotions, how you manage that fear, how you manage that depression, how you manage, how you're able to manage those types of feelings that you have that impacts your ability to be successful in life, which takes us the physical reality. Absolutely. And so then when you start talking about leadership, leadership starts from within. It starts with the individual. It starts with you. And those five components right there, we used them yesterday to talk about spirituality. We're using them today to talk about leadership. You can take those same five components and you can use that to talk about money. Money management, because money management includes, guess what? All five of those components. And my wife is going to talk a little bit about money management later on. But that particular diagram, you can take that diagram and you can apply it to different areas in your in, in your life. So again, like I said on yesterday, make sure you hang on to the, these, these papers here and utilize them as reference material going forward because it can definitely be uh, beneficial to you. So as you work on those five components, leading yourself, all right, being an example at home, doing your chores, uh, without someone having to tell you to do it. That's a form of leadership. Cleaning your room without your parents or guardian having to tell you to do it. That's a part of leadership because you're taking ownership. You're taking responsibility you're, and you're making it happen each and, every, each and every day. Now, as you do, as you do these five things, you are building what is called your character. Character. Now, character, who can tell what character is? What do you think character is? Yes. Okay, it's a person, a character, a person in a, in a story or a movie. Absolutely. Anyone else want to chime in on that? Yeah. An animated character. Okay, an animated character. All right. As you, as you go through those five dimensions on that clock there, you build what is called character. Character is simply, it's who you are. It's who you are. Who are you? Those five dimensions on that, on that clock right there. Make, make up who you are. And as you manage each of those five components on your clock, as you manage each of, the, each of those five components on your clock, it determines who you are, who your character is. Simply put, character is what you leave behind in a room. So when you come into a room, do people feel good to see you come into a room because they know you're going you're gonna to come with a positive mindset, you're going to come with a positive mentality? If there's a problem, they know that you're not going to contribute to the problem, but you're going to offer some solutions to the problem. Is that any of you in here? Everybody should raise their hand. Oh, that's me, that's me. Now, oh, dude, when you go in a room, do people hate to see you coming? I hope that's none of you now. Come on now. I know that. All right. Because that character, character is who you are. You know, it make, it, your mind, your mentality, your attitude, it makes up who you are. And so as you manage those five dimensions on that clock, as you lead yourself, it helps develop your character. And like I said, when you go to the classroom, your teacher should be excited to see you coming because they know that when faith comes into the classroom, I'm not going to have any issues out of faith. She's going to sit. She's going to pay attention. She's going she's gonna to be a positive influence on the classroom. When the teacher sees LJ coming, should have the same response. And so that's a self inventory to ask yourself. When my teacher sees me coming into the classroom, what does he or she think about my character? And on, you have the capacity to work on your character. How? By managing those five dimensions on that clock there. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, some, teach, some, teach, some teachers only come to school to get a paycheck. But then you have those who do care. Those who do care. And you're shaking your head. Well, here's the key. Make sure you care. How about that? Make sure you care about your schoolwork. 
you know, even if you feel that the teacher does not, make sure that you put forth your best effort every day. If you have a problem or a question about the material, make sure you raise your hand. Now, if you, if you aren't able to raise your hand during class, communicate with your teacher after class. Because what you're doing is you're taking ownership and responsibility and letting that teacher know, excuse me, that you care about your homework. You care about your grade. And that's the best you can do. It's the, and they can't, they, now they can't argue with that. But the fact, if you put forth effort, they can't argue with you putting forth effort to do well in his or her class. So that's where the responsibility lies within your hands to make sure that you do all that you can do to be successful in that classroom, regardless of how the teacher feels. All right? I, that, that's a good point that you brought up. Thank you, man. All right? So now, next one, self-esteem. Someone raised their hand and tell me, what is self-esteem? Self-esteem. Huh? All right. Well, check this out. Character is who you are. Self-esteem is how you feel about who you are. So, hmm? well, it's about how you feel about this right here. It's about how you feel about yourself. So now, if, you, if, you, if you're struggling with your character, if you're struggling with this, then chances are you might be experiencing low self-esteem right here. And so that's why, that's why it's important to work on your character. How do I work on my character? Through those five dimensions on that clock. The, more, the stronger your character is, the better you feel about yourself. They're connected. They're connected. All right. Next, you have what are called goals. Because as you, as you develop character, as you feel good about yourself, that's going to impact your goals. Now, someone tell me, what is a goal? What is a goal? Yeah. Um, something that you achieve. You're absolutely right. Did I see your hand? Yeah. Say the same thing. All right. A goal is, is actually, is, you're act absolutely right. A goal is what you do. Very simple definition. Character is who you are. Self-esteem is how you feel about who you are. Goals, what do I do? with who I am. Now watch this. If you're struggling with your character, if you're struggling with your self-esteem, then chances are the goals that you set for yourself are going to be kind of low. They're going to be kind of low because you may not think that you are able to achieve it. Hmm? Why would that be? Because, you know, you're struggling with your character. You're struggling with one of those areas on that clock. So, as you, again, as you develop those five areas on that clock, it impacts these components of your life, okay? Positive goal setting stems from high self-esteem because you set those goals feeling that, hey, I can do this. I can accomplish this. And that's what you want to do. You want to set high goals for yourself, to challenge yourself to meet those goals, all right? Then you have style. What is style? What do you think style is? What's your style? Hmm? How you look. I like that. How you look outwardly. Is that, that where you're coming from? How you look outwardly absolutely is your style. But guess what? Who you are inwardly is your style as well. Because who you are inwardly is going to show where? There you go, my brother. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me challenge. So today going forward, when someone says, what, when you hear the word style, I don't want you to just think about clothing outwardly, but I want you to think about who you are where? Inwardly. Because who you are right here in your heart is far greater than anything that you could ever put on outwardly, so far as clothing-wise. And so your style is contingent upon your what? The goals that you set. Because guess what? If you're setting high goals, then you're feeling pretty good about yourself. Your self-esteem is going to be where? Off the chart. Your character, guess what, is going to be positive. Why? Because I'm, I'm working those five areas that's on, that, that's on that diagram right there. Okay? Any questions or any comments on that? That's how you lead yourself, young people. You lead yourself by managing those five components, all right, developing your character, working on your character, having high self-esteem, setting goals for yourself. Because watch this. 
How can you tell someone else that, hey, you can achieve greatness if you've never set a goal and achieved it yourself? Does that make sense? You can only give someone what you what? Already have. If you don't have it, you can't give it. Does that make sense? Huh? So then, so again, so when you talk about leading yourself, leading yourself, that's what this is all, that's what, that's what leading yourself is, is all about. All right? And again, style is simply how you do what you do. It's the how you do it. Okay? And again, making sure that on the school campus, how you communicate, how you talk to others, that's part of your style. So you, you, you're not known on your campus as using profanity, are you? Any of you in here? No, very good, very good, very good. You know, keep a clean mouth. Huh? Don't use it. Don't use, don't use you know, keep, keep your mouth clean. All right? Because, again, you want to keep a clean reputation amongst the, amongst the teachers. If anything, you just want to keep, keep a clean reputation all the way around. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's, a, and, that's a, and that's a challenge for you. So if you can work on those things, and it's a day-to-day -day process, it's nothing that's going to just happen overnight, it's a lifelong process. But what we wanted to do was we wanted to plant, we wanted to give you these basic foundations that if you work, if you work them, if you focus on them, it can help you along the way. Now, as you focus on these things, flip over to the back of your sheet. You become what is called a torch. A torch. If you, can, if you can work on that diagram on the front and handle that, manage that, all right, then you can become, you can become a torch. Now, what's the purpose of a torch? I'm sorry, say what now? So you can see. So next to that torch right there, write the word see. A torch gives you vision. A torch gives you vision. Now, I heard, a, I heard someone say something over here when you think of a torch. What do you think about? Oh, yep, it provides light, vision. Those are buzzwords, light, vision, see, being able to see. When you are a leader, your responsibility as a leader is to provide vision so that others can see. But now that's where it goes back. You got to, first of all, be able to lead yourself. Because if you can't see, then how are you going to be able to lead somebody else? That's right. Absolutely. You got the blind leading the blind. And what's going to happen to both of them? They're going to fall into a what? Huh? They're going to fall into the, into the ditch. And so, and so learning, how to the, and learning how to have a vision, learning how to have a vision for your life is so important. Now, here's a, here's a word that I asked you about yesterday. This word right here. What does that word right there mean? Uh huh. What does that mean to serve someone? Treat someone with respect. Or serve a homeless person. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, to treat someone with respect. Okay. To believe in them. Okay. What else do you think to serve means? To serve someone. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I love it. To give. Write that word down next to your torch. To give. Absolutely. To give. We live in a day and time where people want to receive, 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 receive. How many of you like receiving gifts? Oh, yeah, we do. Absolutely. But there comes a point in life where we have to turn the table, where we're no longer receiving, but we're what? Giving. giving. Absolutely. Absolutely. And part of being a SWAT team is understanding the importance of giving back. Recognizing, because guess what? When you're in trouble, what do you do? You look for what? A Help! A way out, absolutely. Now, that's what serving is all about. When you're in trouble, you want someone to do what? Help you, give you some help. Now, you want to be on the flip side of that. Being able to give help is such a rewarding experience. And so I challenge you all Going forward, look for opportunities to serve. Start at home. Again, doing your chores without asking. Taking responsibility to, you know, if you, if you click to clean, to, to uh, help make the house a better place to live. What can you do to meet the need? That's what, that's what serving is all about. What you can do to meet, uh, to meet the need, all right? So on your, on your sheet next to the torch there, right? Meet the need. Meet the need. Meet the need. Yes, ma'am. 
Sure, yeah. Meet the need. Because a torch, again, is designed to do what? Bring light when it is dark. All right? So that's what, you, that's what, your, that's what your life is. Your life should be a, a human torch where you are designed to help meet the needs of, of someone. Now, the question becomes, how do I know what the need is? How do I know what the need is? Because I can't meet the need unless I what? Know what the need is. All right. Very good. Very good. So that takes me. Now flip, go to that second sheet that I gave you. Get done with that one. Go to that second sheet that I gave you. It should say the lead factor. The lead factor. All right. Because I want to know what the need is. Isn't that right? So how do I do that? Well, you take the first four letters in the word lead, L-E-A-D, all right? The lead factor. How do I know what the lead is? Well, what the need is, I lead. I lead. So what do I do with that? Well, the L stands for listen. Write that down on your sheet. Listen. You got to be able to listen. Now, what do you normally, what do you typically listen with? Ears. Right. But I challenge you to listen with your eyes as well. Listen with your, thank you. Listen with your eyes as well. Sometimes, and, and when you listen with your eyes, what you're doing is you, you're, you're looking at what's going on around you. Because as you look at what's going on around you, then you can determine, well, what's the problem? What's the problem? Now, see, here's the thing. As you listen, that means you got to be quiet. You can't talk. Well, you can talk, but I'm saying listen more and talk less. Does that make sense? Listen more and talk less. Why would I say you need to learn how to listen more and talk less? Why would I say that? Yes, sir. Very good, my brother. Very good. That's it, TJ. That's it. If you're talking, then you might miss out on some important information. Huh? You might miss out on some important information. So learning how to do what? Talk less and do what? Listen more. So right, to that, right next to that word, listen, right? Listen for the need. Listen for the need. Listen for the need with my eyes and ears. Listen for the need with my eyes and ears. Listen to the need with my what? Eyes and ears. Very good. Listen for the need with my eyes and ears. So I can make sure I understand what the problem is. That's how you know what, need, what help is needed, by listening. Once you listen with your eyes and your ears and you find out, okay, what the problem is, now we can go to the next step, the E. All right, write this word down. Engage, E-N-G-A-G-E. -E. Engage. Engage. Now. All that simply means is this right here. When you engage in something, yeah, I, you need to come on up here and teach this. Uh, -uh you need to come on up here and teach this. That's good, bro. Yeah, you participate. You get involved with the, you come up with the plan. Once you listen and you know what the need is, now you come up with the what? With a plan, okay? You come up with a plan to do what? Yeah, you participate. Well, as you're participating, you're, you're trying to come up with a solution to the what? Problem. There you go. Absolutely. That's called leadership. That's why we call it lead, L-E-A-D. Leading is not about telling somebody what to do. I'm, or, you know, I'm the boss. I tell you, you do what I say. No, 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 no. Being a leader is about listening to the needs of others and then participating, engaging yourself, coming up with a plan to meet the need. All right. Now, watch this here. Once you come up with a plan, now you can go to the letter A. See, this is quick and simple, real easy. The letter A, the, the letter A represents 
accomplish. Accomplish. Yes, sir. Man, I'm telling you, brother, you need to come up here and teach this. You need to come on up here and teach this. You accomplish your goal, absolutely. You, you engage yourself. You come up with a plan. The plan is I'm going to make A's and B's. I'm going to make all A's. Now, you got to back that up. You got to accomplish that. So that A is, a, is the word accomplish. Now, when you accomplish, this is now here's what you do with the word accomplish. You eliminate obstacles. Eliminate obstacles. Or you can say it like this. Break down walls, if that's simple for you. Break down walls. You break down walls. You eliminate the obstacles that are hindering you from accomplishing your goal. Now, if that means you got to turn that Xbox off so that you can study and, 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 and do your homework, if that means you got to turn your cell phone off, if it means you got to turn your television off, that's breaking that barrier. You eliminate that barrier that's keeping you from getting your studying done, you see. Practical, pro practical, practical uh, example, okay? That's what the, so the A stands for what? Accomplish. Accomplish. L stands for what? L. L, yeah. L stands for what? You listen with your what? Ears. And your eyes. E stands for what? Engage, Engage which means you do what? Participate. You come up with a plan to address the needs. Because when, you, when, you, when you're listening with your eyes and ears, you're looking for what's the problem. You engage yourself in a plan to come up with a solution. Then, A, you accomplish that plan. Because you got to, again, you come up with the plan, but you got to what? You got to do it. You got to work the plan. All right? Then, after you hit that A, now you go to the D. The D is simply you demonstrate demonstrate yeah you're demonstrating your solution but guess what though as you're doing your stuff as you're leading other people are watching you so the D stands for demonstrate now when you demonstrate what you're doing is this you're setting the example you're setting the example. You are demonstrating to your brother. You are demonstrating to your fellow, your fellow peers. This is how you are, this is how you do it. This is how you lead. This is how you overcome. This is how you attack challenges. This is how you attack problems. Because listen, when you're on that school ground, when you're on that school campus, people are watching you. Just like you watching people, people are watching you. And so, and so as you handle yourself, as you manage yourself, as you lead yourself, People are watching you. So you got to demonstrate leadership. You got to demonstrate problem solving. You got to demonstrate LEAD. You got to demonstrate this. Why? Because people are watching you. The lead factor. You listen with your eyes and ears to what the need is. After you listen to what the need is, you engage yourself in a plan. You participate, as you said. And there you go. And then you accomplish, absolutely, by eliminating those obstacles that hinder you from getting your plan done. And as you do that, you're demonstrating to others this is how you do it. That's what being a leader is all about, L-E-A-D. And, and as you do that, as you do that, then what you're doing is you're creating, again, you're, you're creating an opportunity for yourself to serve. You're creating an opportunity for yourself to serve. All right, any questions on that? All right, we're just about finished. I'm making good time. Yep, okay, very good. Now, take a look at the bottom. Well, any questions first of all? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Any, any questions about uh, what we said so far? Now, again, you know, I want you to make sure you take this material with you, study it from time to time, and, and you know, refer back to it. I would encourage you, if you've not already done so, get you a three-ring binder. All right. And uh, as you go to camps such as this and you and you gather material handouts, create a binder, a resource binder. Start creating a resource binder if you have not already done so. So that when you again, so that you can gather your materials and have them all in one place where you can go back and study them from time to time. Because if you study this material, it'll help you. It'll help you.
And so it should become a part of your family library. You should have a three ring binder some, of some sort with materials such as this readily available for, for you to use. Because we want you to go home and share this with your parents. Share, them, share, share this stuff with your parents about what you learned this, these past couple of days. Now, here's a scenario. I got a scenario I want us to read through. All right? We got it's, uh, three paragraphs. And the reason why I want to go through here and read this is because it, it illustrates the LEAD concept. All right? And so what we're going to be looking for, uh, we're going look to be looking for what is the need, okay? What is the need in the scenario? And then what are the possible solutions if there are any? in the scenario. All right. So let's take a look through here. Uh, someone raise their hand and read that first paragraph for me. I need I want to need you to read it loud and clear for me. All right, sir, go ahead. First paragraph. Now, as we're reading, hold on. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. At the, at the bottom down there. Now, as we're reading this paragraph, I'm going to I'm going to ask you to take to make little notations. So um, make sure you write little notations as, as we go through here at certain points in the paragraph. Okay, go ahead. All right, so right there, we're introduced to Dr. J and his leadership team. Those are the main characters. So we have a leader. What's the leader's name? Dr. J, and he has a leadership team. All right. Okay, my brother, keep going. All right. Now, I highlighted the word desert. What's wrong with the desert? I just, I just told you that as you read now, I'm going to ask you to make some little no, so th this is part of it. W okay, what's wrong with the desert? Too hot. It's too hot. All right. What else is wrong with the desert? Huh? Ain't got, Ain't got no water. No resources. Absolute. That's real. There's no, there's no resources in the desert. Yes, ma'am. Hmm? Okay. It depends upon what desert it is. But for the most part, though, but for the, yeah, you're right. But for, but for the most part, though, all right, very little resources in the desert. So you have Dr. J, who's the leader. He has a leadership team, and they're taking a field trip, all right, to the desert. All right, go ahead, my brother. Keep reading. Okay. Um, before leaving for the trip, he spent several weeks teaching the, them tips and passive strategies for survival in Chesapeake. Aha, uh -huh. now let's talk about that for a minute. All right. Now, as a leader, as a leader, a good leader does what? Prepares his team. And so what does it say he did for them right before they got ready to leave? What did he do? He taught them. Yes, tips and packing strategies. All right, tips and packing strategies for survival in the desert climate. All right, keep reading. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, as they were traveling, they encountered a crowd of people with empty cups who were searching for water. All right, now what does that sound like? There is a what? Need, yes. There's a need in the story. The, they have empty cups, all right, and they're searching for what? Water. Water. That's the need. That's the need, all right? So now let's take a look and see how the leadership team responds to this crisis. Uh, I need someone to read loud for me the next paragraph. Now, I'm going to warn you now. As you're reading, I'm going to interrupt you. So be prepared, all right? Here we go. Who's going to read that for me? Huh? Oh, give one of the sisters a chance. Either one of the sisters want to read it for me? Okay, all right. Go ahead. Uh huh. All right. So his leadership came up to him, and they gave him the load. They gave him the lowdown on what was going on. All right. So at this particular point, Dr. J is, is involving himself in this process right here, listening. Because he's listening to what his leadership team has to say about, what the, what, about what's going on. All right? And so they informed him. They said, this is a desert place. It's getting late. All right? Keep reading. All right. So the leadership team was like, okay, hey, listen, listen. Uh, you need to go ahead and send these people away so they can go and get, give them some water. But Dr. J said, well, they don't need to go anywhere. They don't need to go anywhere. He said, you give them what? Something to drink. Now, right there, what is he doing? Dr. J is engaging in the E. Because Dr. J's plan 
is for who to give them water? His his leadership team. There you go. There you go. His leadership team. uh, He said, you give them something to drink. What do they respond and say? All right. We we only thank you, ma'am. We only have a few bottles. All right. So that doesn't sound too good, does it? No. All right. Who's going to read the next paragraph for me? All right. Go ahead. Okay. As he directed the new people to sit down on the ground, he looked up on the roof of his truck and uncovered a shovel and a few basins. All right, stop right there. What he's doing now is he realizes he knows the region really well, and he knows that there, there's some water somewhere. All right, but some work has to be done. Okay. So, as it was just read, upon the roof of his truck. What did they have? They had a shovel and some what? And a few water, water basins. And, and what a water basin is just simply a container that you put water in. All right. So here's the key. All right. He had already packed. He was already planned ahead to pack what was needed. All right. Had a shovel. What do you use a shovel for? Digging. Digging. All right. You represent a shovel. You represent, yeah, I know, right? You represent a shovel. Why do you represent a shovel? Just as the shovel right here is going to be used to find an answer to the problem, you represent a shovel to your community. And what I mean by that is you represent possible solutions to the issues and the concerns that are in your community, that are in your school. You have the capacity to meet the need. Now, here's the challenge. Where was the, where was the shovel on the vehicle? And it had a what over it? A cover. Here's the challenge. You got to be willing to uncover those ideas that are in your head. Some of you, some of you are going to have ideas. You're going to have, you're going to have, God's going to give you plans, strategies, ideas to solve some of the issues that are at home, that are in school, but you got to be willing to uncover those ideas. You got to be willing to step up and say, hey, I know what the problem is. I have an idea. You got to be willing to uncover those ideas and those strategies that God is going to give you to help address the needs within your community. The ideas are within you. You just got to be willing to release them, uncover them. Don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to open your mouth and, and, and share what, what, what that idea is because it may be exactly what is needed. All right, keep reading. Go ahead. Um, he grabbed the shovel and began to dig and break up the tough terrain. Mm-hmm. Shortly afterwards, they began to see puddles of water emerge from the ground. Mm-hmm. Dr. Jay instructed his team to grab the basins and be filling the empty cups. And begin filling the empty cups. Problem solved. Dr. J had already prepared for the journey. All he had to do was uncover what was already there. You've got within you ideas, strategies, plans that that need to be revealed, that need to be uncovered. Why? So that you can begin to dig up some of this tough, tough stuff that's in the environment, that's in your community. You young people, you are the answer for some of these problems that our society has. But you got to be willing to step up to the plate and be a leader. Understand what, find out what the needs are and come up with a plan, come up with a strategy to meet those needs. It's within you. You already came equipped with it. The basin, the water, the basin and the shovel, he had already packed it. When you were born, God already packed you with, with, with greatness. You came into the world with greatness already built in. The challenge is you got to uncover that greatness as you go along. He already had the shovel packed. He already knew they were going to come to a tough place in the desert. He already prepared for it. God has prepared each and every one of you with greatness on the inside. 
But you got to be willing to release that greatness. How? By making smart choices, by managing those items on that clock, by leading yourself so that you can be in a position to lead others. And that's what this session, that's what these sessions are about, to help you to understand that greatness is on the inside of you. You just got to be willing to uncover it and let it come out. Because these communities are dry around us. These school campuses are dry around us. These clubs, when you get ready to go and join these clubs, they're dry. They're looking for leaders. They're looking for individuals with great ideas. You need to be the next one to step up to the plate and introduce those ideas and make an impact within your, within your uh, society. All right? And I'm out of here. The only other thing I have for you, that last sheet that I gave you, and I'm not, I'm not going to go over it because that's for you to read in your own personal time. All right? Your style. That last sheet that I gave you, all right, and like I said, I'm not going to go through it, but I'm just going to highlight it. You can go through it in your own personal time. And get, definitely sit down with your parents and go through this. Sit down with your parents and go through this and come up and find out if it's, if it's a strength, if it's something that you do really well, if it's a need, if it's something that you need to work on, or is it average? Is it something that I don't do really well, I don't do really bad in? It's, you know, but go through this with your parents. It's called your style, how you do something, and, and it was said earlier. And all that includes is planning strategically, coming up with a plan. Someone had talked about that the other day. <coughs> openness to learning. Always have a mindset ready to learn. Have an openness to learning, all right? Easy to, being proactive. Again, that goes back to planning, all right? Having a plan in place to handle the crisis. Dr. J, he had those shovels already packed. He was being proactive. He was planning ahead. Inspiring others to act. All that simply means be a good example. Be a good example at school. Be a good example at home. You should be so good that other people want to be like you. You inspire other people to act. All right? Decision making. Ah, oh, that's on that clock, isn't it? Yep. Make good, making good decisions. All right. Communicating. Positive communication. All right. Being able to, to share your ideas. Being able to be able to, to express when you don't agree with something. Be able to speak and share your ideas. At home, being able to communicate with your family. At school, being able to communicate with your teachers. So important. Relating to people again. Being able to get along. Can't we all just get along? That's what relating to people is all about. Not being a troublemaker. Recognizing that everybody is different. Everybody has their own viewpoints, their own opinions. But being able to get along. All right? Developing people. And all that simply means helping people to grow. Helping people to grow. In that narrative we just read, Dr. J, he was, he was developing his leadership team. If anything, he was teaching them, this is how you pack. For the, for the journey. This is how you pack for the journey. All right? Trustworthiness. All that simply means, can people trust you? Can people trust you? Are you trustworthy? Are you, gonna, you know, if you say you're going to do something, will you back it up? Can God trust you with a plan, with a strategy? Now, does that mean you're perfect? No, it does not, because none of us are but you have a sincere heart to do what is right. And lastly, these are what are called soft skills. And, and, and soft skills are basically those skills that you use to get along with people, all right? And you'll hear, and you'll hear that term used at some point in time, but that's what soft skills are. Soft skills are simply those skills that are used to uh, get along with people, all right? Because look, you can make good grades, but then if you can't communicate with people, your soft skills need some work. You make good grades, you know, but your openness to learning, eh, soft skills. Soft skills are those skills that will help you uh, in the long run as you get older. It'll help you get a job. Because if you can communicate with people, if you can make good decisions, then someone will want to hire you. You know, you, like, you can have good grades, but if, you, if your attitude stinks, I don't want to hire you. 
if your attitude stinks. So you gotta, so you gotta have those soft skills in place. That's part of your style. All right. Any any questions on that? Now, like I said, I know that's a lot of material, but this is a one shot deal for you guys to come to and, and attend this camp. And so we want to make sure we provide you with as much information as possible. That way, during the summer or what have you going forward, put that in your binder, your resource binder. You'll have it. You can go back and look at it. And especially, you know, as you get older and you start looking at jobs and filling out job applications. And if you go to an interview, people are going to ask you, well, what do you do really well? Those not that, that leadership dimension page, that's what they're looking for. That's what they're looking for. You, and so you'll remember, if you hang on to that sheet, and remember, you know, as you get older, oh, yeah, I do remember that gentleman gave me this page. It works, I'm telling you. It works if, if, you, can, if, you, if you stick with that, that material there. All right? Any questions on that? Any questions, comments? All right, you guys have been great this morning. Thank you very much.